Okay, so we're back. We are going to pick up what we left off in the classroom. In the classroom, the camera died. So I just want to pick up where we left off at, not to leave people hanging. But I want to show you, according to the Bible, that taxation was um, present amongst the Israelites. And uh, when we were in our land, we were taxed heavily. I want to show you in the book of Acts in the New Testament, uh, chapter 18, verse 1, it reads, After these things, Paul departed from Athens and came to Corinth, which is up there in Europe, or Greece, and found a certain Jew named Aquila, born in Pontus, lately come from Italy with his wife Priscilla, because that Claudius had commanded all Jews to depart from Rome and came unto them. And because he was of the same craft, he abode with them and wrought for by their occupation they were tent makers. So in this particular segment is showing how a census was taken, uh, taken part. And with the census being done, uh, normally people had to report back to where they were from. You know how we have people here, we have them uh, from other countries on a visa pass, they might have a visa to work in a certain country of, uh, or in a certain part of the uh, Americas, the uh, United States. Well, that visa is only good for so long before they have to report back to their country. Okay, if there's a census done, they cannot be part of the census. Remember, Rome controlled Asia, Europe, and Africa, parts of Africa. So the census was going to be uh, involving all those countries of Ro Roman citizens. So what I want to show you now, let's go to Acts chapter 16. The book of Acts chapter 16, verse 16. Acts 16 and 16 reads, And it came to pass, as we went to prayer, a certain damsel possessed with the spirit of divination met us, which brought her masters much gain by soothsaying. Okay, who were her masters? The masters were the masters of the church, the bishops, all right, or the elders of that particular church. So um, remember, this is the book of Acts. So there were other sects in the land of Rome. All right, so I'm going to keep reading. It says, The same followed Paul and us in Christ, saying, These men are the servants of the Most High, uh, thy power, which show unto us the way of salvation. And this did she many days. What did she do? She was following after him, saying, Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Okay. That's Sue saying, that's coming from, you know how it is in these churches. Women say, oh, praise God, praise God. But sometimes women have spirits on them, and it's not really of the Most High. So this is what they were reading, this is what they were reading into her. They were reading her spirit. That says, and this did she many days. But Paul, being grieved, turned and said to the spirit, I command thee in the name of Hamashiach, Yahushai, to come out of her. And he came out the same hour. All right? So a lot of times people have that spirit. They don't really know God. They want to do right, but that spirit is not the spirit of the Most High sometimes. You know what I'm saying? For you to say, amen, amen, amen. It may not be of the Most High. So he got tired of her. He got tired of her nagging. Right? Uh, verse 19. And when her master saw that the hope of their gains was gone... Why were they upset that the hope of their gains were gone? Because now she found out uh, she's been healed and she found out the truth and she found out that she should be keeping the law of the Most High. Keeping the Sabbath day holy, keeping all these different uh, laws that we're supposed to keep. It says they caught Paul and Silas. Who, who are they that caught Paul and Silas? The members of this church or the Roman centurions. It says, and drew them into the marketplace unto the rulers, and brought them to the magistrates, saying, These men, being Jews, do exceedingly trouble our city, and teach customs which are not lawful for us to receive, neither to observe, being Romans. Okay? So, why were they persecuting Paul for teaching customs which are not lawful for them to receive? What were the customs? Keeping Sabbath day holy. What was the customs? Not eating profane foods. What were the customs? Following Christ, Yahweh Shai. All right, but also keeping the laws. It says, neither to observe being Romans. So these Romans 
Were they Israelites? Yes, they were Israelites calling themselves Romans. Did they pay taxes? Yes, they paid taxes. Were these masters mad because Paul wasn't paying taxes in that, in that city state? Yes, and the multitude rose up together against them, and the magistrates rent, out, rent, rent off their clothes and commanded to beat them. Rent off their clothes, meaning they're so mad they ripped their clothes. And when they had laid many strips, stripes upon them and cast them into prison, charging the lay lord to keep them safely, who having received such a charge, thrust them into the inner prison and made their feet fast in the stocks. And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto the Most High. And the prisoners heard them. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prison were shaken. And immediately all the doors were opened, and everyone, one's bands were loose. So in this particular segment, it's talking about how the people of Rome, they were lost. They were Israelites who were lost. When Paul went to Rome, most people think he was up there where most people go in the city and see all the statues and the Colosseum and so forth. But when you look at Rome, this is the area of Rome that Paul went to. Now, this is a Bible dictionary. I'm going to read this. It's Rome. Like Babylon became a symbol of organized paganism in opposition to Christianity in the Bible. All right, I'm going to drop down. Okay, right here where I highlighted it. It says, Paul would enter by the Capena Gate, his hired house. It gives you a verse, Acts 28, 30. Would be in the sum block of flats and insula, which means slum area. So where was Paul in Rome? He was in South Rome. He was in the area where the Israelites dwelt. The Israelites dwelt in the slums of Rome, which they call the ghetto. That was considered the ghetto. All right. So just to show you that Paul was talking to Israelites who were in Rome in the slum areas. Okay, so now I want to go to, um, I want to show you how when we read these books, we, I try to bring out other books to prove to you points uh, of understanding. And just to let you know that um, when we're going through these books, I'm trying to show you a comparison of how we should be thinking. Okay, we should be trying to prove who we are every time we speak. Because people don't, the one thing that people don't believe is that we are the Jews. And so I have to show you through books that we are the Jews. And I'm going to do a lesson on that. It's going to follow this lesson. Even, I'm going to go to verse, um, let's go to Matthew actually. Let's go to Matthew 22 and 15 because I want to show you that even Hamashiach Yahushai paid taxes. He paid taxes. Let's go to Matthew chapter 22, verse 15. Matthew 22 and 15. It says, Then went the Pharisees and took counsel, how they might entangle him in his talk. And they sent out unto him their disciples with the Herodians. Who are the Herodians? They are the men of Herod, the king of Israel at that time. Half Edomite, half Jew. It says, saying, Master, we know that Thou art true, and teachest the way of God in truth. Neither carest thou for any man, for thou regardest not the person of men. Then they, then they say, tell us therefore, they try to entrap him, tell us therefore, what thinkest thou? Is it lawful to give tribute unto Caesar or not? Because they were under the Romans. Who was the Roman uh, king? Caesar. So they're saying, is it lawful to give uh, tribute? To Caesar. Now we talked about the tributaries. The tribute is paying taxes. So listen to what Yahushua says, verse 18. But Yahushua perceived their wickedness and said, Why tempt you me, you hypocrites? Show me the tribute money. And they brought unto him a penny. And he saith unto them, Whose is this image and su su superscription? They said unto him, Caesar's. Then saith he unto them, Render therefore unto Caesar the things which are Caesar's, and unto the Most High the things that are God's. 
When they had heard these words, they marveled and left them and went their way. Okay? So, here they are trying to trip them up on uh, whether or not we should be paying taxes. So let me show you something else. So let's go to uh, Matthew chapter 17. And let's read um, Matthew 17 and 24. Okay, Matthew 17 and 24. And when they were come to Capernaum, they that received tri tribute money come to Peter and saith, Doth not your master pay tribute? Does not your house shall pay taxes? That's what they were asking. This is a totally different story now. Verse 25, he said, yes. And when he was coming to the house, Yehoshua prevented him, saying, What thinkest thou, Simon? It says, Of whom do the kings of the earth take custom or tribute? Question. Of their own children or of strangers? Question. Peter saith unto him, Of strangers. Yehoshua saith unto him, Then are the children free. Notwithstanding, lest we should offend them, Go thou to the sea, and cast a hook, and take up the fish that first cometh up. And when thou hast opened his mouth, thou shalt find a piece of money. That take, and give unto them for me and thee. So what did he do? He paid his taxes. So if he paid taxes, guess what? There's got to be a record. Not only that, when we look through the scriptures and we see... Okay, say, for example, we couldn't find a birth certificate of Hamashiach. Well, the Romans kept death certificates. They kept death certificates. Those that they crucified, they kept record of that. They glorified in the record of death. So they have records on that. So there's a way to prove that Yahushai had a record that's possibly been archived somewhere. Okay, why am I mentioning the taxes? To show you that during those days, in order to collect taxes, a census must be done. And if a census must be done, then like I said before, birth, certific birth certificates must be accounted for. Every child must be accounted for. That's why when you read Matthew 2 and 16, it talks about uh, how Herod sent out people, uh, sent out soldiers to kill the children. They had to know who was in the houses, also paying taxes. Think about what Yahweh did. Did he not turn over the tables in the temple? What were, they, what were the Jews in there doing? Collecting taxes. Show me in the scriptures where Yahushua confronted the Romans about anything. He never confronted the Romans. He never confronted them. Now the Romans came to him like the centurion came to him to ask for uh, um, a blessing for his servant to be healed. But Yahushua never confronted the Romans. That wasn't his job. His job was what? To wake up the 12 tribes of Israel. That was his job. He could care less about the Romans. Now when he spoke, did they listen to him? Yeah. But who was he fishing for? The 12 tribes of Israel. I, I want to show you in the, this book called Judea Trembles. In the book of Judea Trembles, written by uh, Rudolf Windsor. This is Judea Trembles, under Rome. Rudolf Windsor. And when you look at page uh, 42, I'm going to read it for you. It says, beginning in the 6th or 7th AD, the Roman government levied a poll tax on every individual, including women, slaves, and servants. But they exempted males under 14 and females under 12 years of age. They wasn't at the age of responsibility yet. It says, and the very old. In addition... Uh, the people had to pay taxes on their livestock and on the produce of the land. Furthermore, if a producer wanted to export his goods to another district or county, he had to pay a toll tax at certain locations, kind of like today. It's the same thing. It's a feudal system and a social, socialist system here, as well as the tax system, right? Why I say a feudal system? Because you have to pay a fee for everything. You park your car on the street, you got, you got uh, meter maids. If you don't pay your meter... That's a fee. You could get fined for that. It's a feudal system. When you look at the Roman system and you look at the uh, system here in America, we pay taxes. Over in Europe, they don't pay taxes like this. Okay? All our taxes goes back to Britain to, f to feed them. All right? In the IMF system. IMF system. So the fees that we pay 
are to uplift the government and pay for their loans that they may have borrowed from other people. But we pay a fee, just like the Boston Tea Party, they had to pay a fee to Britain, right, to England. We still pay that fee, despite the stories that we have heard about Dred Scott and so forth. So this is the system of opposing. And when you look at the tax system, it's similar to here. It says the system of imposing taxation on the masses inside of the tempers of all special groups. The Judeans felt that the Roman intervention in their political matters was bad enough, but now they encroached into their private lives as well, taking heed counts and taxing members of the families. Eventually, the key issue before the Sanhedrin Supreme Court was the census of what? Taxation. The court put aside other questions and discuss the hot potato of taxation. Such distinguished members of Hillel and Shammai, famous Pharisees debated the issue, and some members asked the question, I, we become slaves to the Romans. Okay, so it is a form of slavery. The Judean state was in such confusion and turmoil at this time because of the rebel leader of Judas of Galilee. Now, Judas of Galilee, he was like a um, uh, rebel that became the king of Israel. There was a lot of kings from that time to 70 AD. There was a lot of kings popping up, but they were all getting killed. Just like there was a lot of prophets that came after uh, Christ, Hamashiach, but they were all getting killed. False prophets getting killed. Okay, so taxation was in place. Now, if you don't think that we had records, and you go to um, 